following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. All right, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX uh, this morning. As you can see, we are completing a small ABCD pattern. Well, it's not too small. It took a while to, to, uh, to complete, but it's certainly a perfect one. If we take a look at the FTSE, the UK market, you'll notice that it's also making one, and it's right down near the 78% level. Whether that means we're going to rally or not, I don't know, or whether these will rally or not, because no one knows, but the pattern is completing. Whether it'll mean anything or not remains to be seen. Folks, one of the first things I do is my routine in the morning. I get up and I do a little five-minute meditation, and basically I, I got this from my good friend Mark Douglas, and basically my meditation uh, goes, you know, it's a relaxation basically and to try to do the right thing and correct errors if I'm supposed to. But the focus of it is to realize that I don't know what's going to happen next. One of my biggest problems as a trader is I have an opinion and I do, you know, pretty extensive technical analysis and I think I'm right. <laughs> sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. But I have to focus on the times when I'm wrong uh, you know, that's like, uh, you know, Paul Tudor Jones and Roy Longstreet and Jesse Livermore all said the same thing. You know, take care of your losses and the profits will take care of themselves. And that's really what that meditation is for, is to accept the loss, move on and just forget it. You know, <laughs> no, I use vodka, Jose. No, I don't do any. Uh, well, I, I do have I do drink tequila when I have a margarita, but I don't drink any hard liquor at all. I have a glass of wine uh, every couple of days, but I don't really don't really drink very, uh, very much at all. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's move on to a couple of other things. We've looked at the DAX, uh, but the, the other part of the, of the thing that I do in the morning when I get up, the first thing I do is I look at Bloomberg. And this morning, they had uh, David uh, Rubenstein, I think is his name, Rosenberg, from uh, from Canada. He's with Gulfston Chef, and he's a he was very famous in 2006. He was calling for the top. Well, it didn't call until it didn't come until 2007. So he took about one year of heat before he was right. And, of course, he was right. It was the, you know, the uh, housing bubble thing. And he talked about the fact that the Bernanke was, you know, calling about, you know, three more years of good real estate market. And it was topping right at that time. But the important thing is whenever they do Bloomberg, they always have a positive and a negative. Well, the young lady that was on the other side of this uh, coin was, I swear to God, uh, she's about the same age as my Burrow, who's 13, but she looked very, very young, and she made a very elaborate case on the fundamentals of negative interest rates and all of that stuff. And the first thing that came to my mind is my friend uh, Art Cashin, who I was fortunate enough to meet 40-some uh, years ago when I was at Drexel. Uh, his, uh, one of his mentors was Bob Schiffer, who was a very good friend of mine. He was a New York Stock Exchange member, and I used to go back and go on the floor when you used to be able to do that and go into the members' lounge and have lunch and stuff. But Bob was a, a dear friend, and he helped mentor Art Cash. And one of Art's favorite quotes is, don't trust anybody that is not old enough to shave. And he said, that includes boys and girls. <laughs> but anyway, th this girl, I swear to God, she couldn't be more than 14 years old. She was probably 30, but to me, she looked about 14. And she was saying how important negative interest rates were and that really was a good thing. Well, it certainly hasn't been that way in history. And I tell you, if you stop someone on the street and said, give me $10,000 and I'm only going to charge you $500, to hold that money for you. Do you think that uh, <laughs> you do you think that that's going to be a good deal? No, no. Come on, folks. That doesn't make any sense at all. All right. Let's take a quick look at a couple of things. I've had a few questions I wanted to bring to your attention. The two of the markets that we're watching really closely here is the E-mini S&P. I'd like to uh, show you yesterday what we did is we did make a really nice three drive to a bottom over the past five days. You know, we've come off 100 handles from the top. Uh, exactly. Now, last night, you'll notice that we went up to the 382 retracement at that 2893, and then we backed off 
to the 78% level this morning at 28.72. And then we had a little type of a news or whatever. Oh, I know what it was. It was uh, uh, the Chinese guy is coming to make a deal. If you can believe that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge available for you. You'll notice the resistance up there on the S&P would come in right around that 29.10 level. That's the 61% retracement of the high we made on the 5th, and it's also the 50% uh, retracement of the high that we made back on May the 1st. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know, but let's pay attention to it because uh, we're getting news items now. The market runs really, really quickly. So unless you think you know exactly what you're doing, you flat better protect yourself because no one else is going to do it for you, boys and girls. And that's the that's the main thing that you want to uh, want to be uh, talking about. Some of the things they're chatting about here in the Tiger. The news today is about medication and drinking and stuff like that. And, folks, when I was on the floor of the Merck, you know, back in 82, 83, 84, and you would not believe the number of floor traders there that had little flasks with them that would uh, go into the lounge and take a nibble of their flasks, they, flasks uh, a little bourbon or whatever it was. But they also, I'm sure they shook, shook some drugs. I never saw any of that, but I certainly saw the fact that they were they were certainly drinking while they were trading, which is an absolute disaster for uh, thinking and trying to make money. But that was not my point. The fact is that some people do it. You shouldn't. And uh, But that's up to you. I don't want to get off my soapbox now. <laughs> All right. I had a question here about Lyft, L-Y-F-T. We've been keeping a sort of a small eye on this thing over a period of time because we wanted to see what's happening. And I just wanted to remember this stock came out at uh, 72, I believe. It uh, no, wow. Let's let's try it again, Larry. It went to it started at 90 uh, back in uh, April. We broke down, and then in early May, April we had a four-day rally. That rally was ten dollars. Okay, that left an ABCD due around fifty-four dollars a share. And you'll notice the rally we had yesterday in Lyft was a three-eight-two rally of that high. It was also nine dollars from uh, the 26th of April to the 7th of May. So that completed that. That ABCD will take you down to this level of 52 to 48, somewhere in that ballpark. My guess is we're going to come in right at around 51, and that's where I think we're going to see a bottom. Whether it'll have anything to do with what's going on with Uber or not, I don't know. I'm just looking at the charts. I have not traded this. I just look at it from a historical standpoint to see that the fact that there's so much volume in there that these numbers are going to work more than they fail. So that's the one of the key things that you want to be uh, to looking at. So let's just watch that. That's uh, We learned something from it, and that's the main thing that we want to keep in mind. By the way, that, uh, that pattern that we were looking at in the DAX, or in the S&P, that was an ABCD, and that was one of the first major ABC patterns that we've had on the downside since our bottom on December the 26th. If we take a look, at the NASDAQ, oh, we got the first break already. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Hold on, let's get this NASDAQ up here. We'll start to discuss it. You see the NASDAQ, what's interesting here? Uh, let's get right back to the commercial, and we'll be, we'll be right back with some more information at the break. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, one of the things that uh, we do want to uh, bring to your attention again is this uh, chart here on the gold because we're coming into some really strong resistance this morning. Uh, that comes in at that 1293 level. So far, we've been at the um, 12... 92.50. We didn't quite take that out yet, uh, but it's certainly looking like it's going to run into some very stiff resistance. We've already broken five dollars uh, from that level, so whether that's going to mean much or not, I'm not sure. If we uh, if we look at the hold on one second here, I wanted to get the silver to show you it also because it's another one that looks uh, really interesting, and uh, I know it's real interesting because I just did it. Here we are. I think this is it. Nope, that's the gold again. Now, where are you, Silver? Wow, I'll tell you, I don't understand why these guys sneak up on me like this, but I have these things all ready to go, and then when I pull them up, they hide from me. I don't know if it's just old age or not. Let's just put the silver up so you'll be able – now, that's not it. Boy, this is this is troubling to me, folks, because I really wanted to show you the silver because it's lagging the gold market so badly, and as is the platinum. And for some reason, and I don't know what that reason is, I just can't find the doggone chart. I'll have to redo it uh, at the break, which I will do, because it is certainly, uh, you know, I'm going to do it right now, because uh, well, this is our show, and we could do it the way we like. So give me one second, and I'll post this uh, silver chart one more time so that we can see it, because it's showing you that there is a whole lot of uh, resistance up here at that uh, 12 uh, excuse me, $12 at $15.01, uh, and uh, that's what we're really watching here. So just give me one second, and I'll have this up there, and that's the one second. Now it should be in the file. Now the $64 question is, can I find it? And the answer is, da-da, here we go. This will be able to discuss it without any trouble at all. Here is the... Uh, uh-oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. I lost the uh, the contact to a TFNN, it looks like. Uh, I've lost the Tiger Den, folks, so I guess I can't post it until it till I get back on to um, Hotcom. So I don't know what happened there is. Uh, these computers, and this is what drives me absolutely bonkers. Uh, just give me a second. I'm sure that uh, you can hear me, but I can't hear you, and I have to wait till I get logged on to uh, 
the uh, program for Hotcom, and it takes a little bit longer these days because of the hacking that goes on. So just remember, folks, uh, we're in really active markets, so you've got to use a stop. Even if you use a desktop, God, for heaven's sakes, you know, be safe because, uh, you know, you saw what happened, you know, Monday, not Sunday night when the market dropped 50 handles in the S&P. You know, you, have, you don't have any control over that if you're long, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not a very good feeling. And with these tweets that come out from whoever or whatever, that makes it a little bit more uh, difficult. Hold on, I'll be here in the uh, Tiger Den. Uh, right now, I'm coming back right on. I hope, um, have you folks been able to hear me? Have I been talking? Because I'm going to post this uh, chart for the silver now. You'll notice that uh, uh, we, we can't make a new high here. And that's, uh, you know, we went up and touched that high in the gold. So it's it, this is not good action in the gold market, folks, to get up there. Now, hey, this could change in a few minutes and we might be moving. So uh, that's what Lynn Platinum is even looking worse. I mean, Platinum, which is the one we've been following, thinking that it had some possibility of being some, you know, really pretty bullish, and it's not, it's not doing that. I mean, it's just not, uh, it, it's just not going up, and that's not a, uh, that's not a good sign, you know. Whether that's uh, pretty much uh, what you're looking at, Maria, you're right about the tweets and the Chinese. You got to remember, folks, the Chinese are very good traders. Uh, I used to watch them, how they operated in the soybean markets, you know, back in the 70s. And they didn't get involved in gold and silver from my perspective when I was at uh, Drexel those six years because I didn't have anything to do with that uh, particular thing. Even though I went to Hong Kong a couple times for gold seminars, uh, I didn't see much of an interest uh, coming from China. And then later, it certainly did. But uh, remember that gold topped. In January the 20th of 1980, and was in a 22-year bear market. It didn't bottom until uh, 2002, uh, and that's when our good friend and leader Tom O'Brien said it was going to bottom. And by golly, the man who said King Dollar was right about the gold too. So, uh, yes, they do. Uh, they have. Uh, they don't do the same. I don't think they use Twitter, but they've got something like that. They've got Alibaba, which is like. Uh, 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 Amazon, and then they've got some other things. Uh, they've got a, a, a Google's over there working with them and stuff. But I, I'm sure they have a Twitter. Every every if you ever seen anything in the, ever watch anything in Chinese television, everybody is carrying one cell phone. I mean, they have cell phones. Like, well, they only pay like eight dollars a month, you know, for their fees because they the same thing in Thailand and India and all the other places. The fees are so cheap, so they can have the people out there using the phones. But uh, Oh, well, don't get me started on this stuff. Anyway, you know, <laughs> you know, folks, I've been doing this for a really long time. And what I see happening in the world now is really troublesome. I remember when I was a little shaver going to St. Benedict's Catholic School there in Terre Haute, Indiana. And the thing that I was most scared about when I was a little guy about four, fourth and fifth grade is we used to ha hide under the desks. Yeah, these little wooden desks, Sister Mary Perpetual and Sister Clotilde, they would keep us under the desk getting ready for the nuclear holocaust coming from uh, from uh, the, Russia and uh, Khrushchev. But, you know, uh, I mean, those were very scary times. But remember, folks, fear is false evidence appearing real. None of our fears, well, 99 percent of them, you know, don't come don't come to fruition. So. Let's uh, let's remember that. Very, very important. If you want to call in today, oh, Al's telling me the lines are all filled up right now, but later on they might be open. 877-927-6648 if you have any question, and we'll be able to uh, try to answer them. <laughs> we'll be trying to answer those uh, if we can uh, for sure. Um, the next one that I wanted to mention here is about the uh, Japanese yen. I wanted to get this up here and show you. We've been uh, talking about this uh, last week and again uh, this week. If you'll notice that double 78% level that we had last week and the week uh, early in March telling you that it was extremely strong resistance. And those of you that ever read Jesse Livermore's book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, or Richard Wyckoff's The Wyckoff Method, you know, tape reading would have been very helpful there because we made a higher high in April by March by five pips, 
in one of the largest foreign exchange currencies cross rates in the world. It's number three. And uh, well, no, it is number two, U.S. dollar, and then Japanese yen. It's number two. And, uh, you know, then it doesn't go and it goes straight down. So, you know, basically that tells you that that 78 percent level. But now, boys and girls, we are hovering near the 38 percent level. So kind of pay attention to that. It's going to be interesting. Now, what we've done now is we've taken out the March lows. So that is the same thing that we did on the downside that we did on the upside. Now, whether that means anything or not, I don't know. But the two things that you should take away here is the importance of those resistance points and then take a little trip down memory lane and go over to February, March of last year and look at the three drive to a bottom pattern forming in the Japanese yen at 104 and change. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I got a very unusual email from somebody last night asking me a question. Do I think there's somebody that knows something more than what we know. Well, of course we know that's the case. I mean, there's people out there that know insider information, but uh, there are things that happen that, that make you wonder. Now, I posted a chart. Now, all you folks that like conspiracy theories, 
uh, you'll like this. <laughs> anyway, uh, take a look here at 9-11. That's September 11th. Now, the, the arrow that you have there, this is a weekly chart. So this is the week that ended on the 7th of uh, November, not not the 11th. Uh, so it ended on the 7th. Look at the big, big down move in the uh, uh, transportation index. This is happening when the rest of the stock market was actually going higher. Somebody started to lay heavily on the airline stocks and the, the transportation index. And you can see the transportation index went from uh, 2,900 2, down to 1,900 in a matter of three weeks. And of course, we were closed those five days, you know, after 9-11. But I don't know if anybody knows anything about that. Someone might have just been taking protection, but it uh, it does make one wonder why the stocks for the airlines were getting hit so badly, you know, a couple of days before the, uh, the planes hit 9-11. Uh, so we'll see, you know, some of the things that happened in the market. That's why I'm a technician, folks because I flat don't know when they're going to turn or anything like that. And the news is just, uh, I mean, especially nowadays, the news, I, I, that's, why, I, that's why I don't watch it. I mean, it's, uh, it doesn't make anything difference to me. If prices are going up, there's more buyers. If prices are going down, there's more sellers. That's, you know, all I look at. And uh, it's got me this far, and I'm in seven and a half furlongs of an eight furlong race. So we'll have to uh, just wait and see you know, how the rest of it uh, turns out. All right, now the next one that I wanted to talk about, of course, is the uh, commodity markets. We are trying to make some type of a bottom here in some of these things, but one of the ones that we need to be watching today is our October sugar. Uh, I don't know, Ruby, if you're on, we should be right there right now, uh, down at that 78% level. Uh, someone would double check that for me to see if October sugar is trading around 12.05 because that probably uh, will uh, we'll see what's uh, happening. Well, anyway, watch, uh, watch this sugar, because it's, it's a very nice pattern forming. Uh, as far as the cattle, someone asked a question about it. Folks, they, they broke so much. Le there you go. It's uh, 1186. I think that's about it, isn't it? That should be the, that's October sugar, right, uh, Maria? I think that should be the bottom. If it's, uh, if it's any below that, uh, we're, it shouldn't, uh, ooh, that, that's not good. If it's below 11.86, uh, sugar is breaking down. You don't want to have anything to do with that one. So uh, let's just remind ourselves that uh, uh, is it October sugar, uh, Maria? Could you double check for me because I'm not able to pull up prices with the uh, radio show going on, and that makes it a little bit more difficult. But we'll find that out a little bit later. A little bit later. Now, regarding the grain markets, folks, uh, we we've got these Chinese talks going on. No one knows what's going to happen. You hear the guys coming over to make a deal. You know, um, <laughs> you'll have to uh, wait and see if uh, that's going to happen or not. But uh, you know, you can see what happens when a deal breaks from what happened Sunday night. So just be careful in some of these markets. We've got a very, very old, uh, oversold condition. There you go. October is 12:20. That's the one we want to watch. See, that's uh, uh, that that see it should, did it, did October that that's right at the bottom. 12:10. See if the, Maria, Maria double check for me if you would please. And I'm not in this. Someone just asked me a question. Did the October hit 12:10? That's only 100 bucks difference between 12.10 and 12.20, but the exact number was 12.10. I just wanted to know. But at 11.86, you don't want anything to do with that. It's got to hold above 12. And I mean, you're, you're talking about a thousand, eleven thousand dollar contract. You only have to risk 200 dollars. I, I don't know how you can get any closer than that. So keep in mind that's what it's looking at. Remember, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when I told you about my meditation in the morning is to worry about the losing? I worry about that more than anything else because those are the ones that get to you. Look at, look what happened. Let's just bring this chart up and update it here. I'm going to do this if I can. Maybe I can get the updated price. I'm not sure, but I wanted to bring this uh, to your attention here for sure, and we'll see where we are. And that is this uh, August cattle just to show you how quickly these things can break when they break. Now, let me post this so that I can send it out without too much trouble, and then we will have a better idea of what is going on, and I'd show you why you've got to protect your backside. Here was that cattle that we talked about last week at that 10, uh, 108 level, and, uh, you know, that, that was a case where you don't have to uh, – 
You don't have to. That's right on the money. Boy, that's, thank you, Maria. That just hit it spot on. Okay, look at look at the cattle. They're right there at the beautiful level of that 109. And what do they do the next day? They open higher by a, by a, a penny to 110, and then they drop $4 uh, a time. Hold on, folks. My... Uh, my trusty little beeper is telling me that uh, something's going on here, and that is the fact that the ah we're making a little bit of a a little bit of a nice little move here in the soybeans, a very very small ABCD pattern that I absolutely have an interest in, but I want to wait and see what happens. I'm watching these uh, July beans at uh, eight uh, twenty nine. Uh, we're trading at 8.29 and a quarter right now to see if it's going to uh, see if that's going to hold up. But we'll able to see later on. Okay, let's move on to the next one that we're taking, and that is these Treasury bonds. Uh, I have a chart prepared. God willing, it's going to come up, so we'll be able to see it. Ah, shucks. You know what I got to do is I've got to get me an assistant to understand what the heck I'm doing with these darn charts because I I get these things prepared and I spend a lot of time doing it and then uh, you get tired of hearing that you don't need to hear that so we'll move on to the next one here. Okay, let's not worry too much about it. Well, that gold backed off five dollars from that level, so I'm not sure whether it's going to get back up there again. It looks like it's pretty stiff uh, stiff resistance up there at that 12.92. Uh, Steve Rhodes mentioned that that level of 12, um, uh, 96 was a level he was looking at, and I certainly respect his work because of uh, all the awards that he's done. He's doing a great job, but that's another one that we want to uh, to watch. I've got to find the doggone bond chart. Shut the front door. I mean, we covered it yesterday. Is this it? Nope, that's not it. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. When this break comes up, I'm going to bring the bond one up to date. Uh, geez. See, I've got 47 charts in here to talk about, and I can't find them. And I've got them marked by name, and uh, I'm not finding it, so I must have deleted it by accident. That's two today. Well, 0 for 2. That's not a good thing to have happen. All right, let's check it, Check what the markets are doing here this morning. Um the S&P, we had a little bit of support down there at that 1268 level, but frankly, folks, it looks very bearish long term, no question about it. You saw those charts that I posted for the NASDAQ and the S&P. Both of them made 382 retracements last night. Not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. I'll repost it just to show you the importance of this. You know, that was at, uh, you'll be able to see uh, that 1290, 2893, the high was a 2899 made a fast tick there and then gave up and now we're trading at 2875 better hold this level 2870 boys and girls or we're going lower 877-927-6648 If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors distributor for side fund services llc the bull bear binary option hour next on tfnn okay back folks uh, we're going to take a look here at the hourly chart of the june treasury bonds uh, pay close attention to this one, folks, because you see double ABCD patterns in there uh, coming in at that 149.20 level. That's a 78% level. We're trading at 148.26. It's just about one handle away. But if you get up to that level, that's going to be a really interesting because you have two major ABCDs that I just mentioned, plus the 78% level, plus you have a three drive to a top pattern. If you look at this chart closely, look to the far left, you'll see the three drive pattern that was made at the 61% retracement on the long term daily at 150.20. Then we had the big breakdown. Now we're rallying back up and we're at the 61% retracement now at 148.26. But I believe we're going to get to the, uh, and this is my opinion, and this is where we get into trouble. I believe we're going to get up to that 149.22 um, level. Whether that happens or not, you know, I'm not sure, but, you know, nobody else is either. So let's pay uh, play close attention to that. Uh, we've been reminded this morning that we've got oil inventories coming in here at uh, 1030. That's in uh, 45 minutes. That'll be an interesting thing to look at. The crude oil, as we've said many times here the last three or four days, is that we have a very strong support level that hit on uh, Sunday night. Coming in exactly at that uh, at 60.30, now the low was uh, I believe uh, the number was at 60.39 and the low was at uh, 60.30 or 60.29. We're trading at 61.26, but we've been as high as 63, so it's in a consolidation zone here. But with the inventories coming in today, there's always uh, a lot of jumping around, you know, uh, looking at those too. So pay attention to that. As we uh, as we look through uh, some of these things, the the early morning stock, uh, what it looks like from uh, from a technical pr perspective, if we can hold uh, 28.72, and I'm not I'm not sure we can, but the the $64 question is, we're trading at 28.80 right now. If we could get a nice little rally here for about an hour or so, that would be interesting. If we could get it up around 28.95 in the S&P. In about an hour, that would be a really nice one uh, to look at. Or even if it got really crazy and got to 29.05, that would be a the first ABCD in this move, and that would be the one that would be really uh, interesting, you know, to pay uh, to pay close attention to. So those are just a few of the things that I'm looking at. Uh, when I was talking about the July beans, and so when we went below the 8.28 level, the number that I'm looking at is 825 we're trading at 827 that is a 61 percent retracement we made a low down there at 816 we rallied 20 cents a bushel bringing it back to 825 would be a 61 percent retracement and uh, i'd be watching the beans if we get into that level that could be a very very interesting one 
uh, to look at. That's a that's a real fun one to watch. Right now we're trading at 2883 uh, in the S and P. We'd like to see this get up to 2895 in about an hour, and uh, it doesn't always do that, but sometimes it does. We'll have to wait. See, it's very oversold right now because of the action that we had last night. We got up to that 382 retracement at uh, 2990 and change, I think 2998, and then we broke down 25 handles down to 24, 28, uh, 72, and now we're 10 handles higher than that, 2882. So let's watch these as we go through this morning and pay uh, sort of close attention to it, but the area we're watching is at 2890, is the area in that uh, S&P to see if it's going to have some any resistance at that level uh, starting early this morning. Folks, we have one other question here about Apple. I'll bring that up, and we'll discuss it here in just a moment. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648, and uh, that's the area. Al said that the lines have just uh, emptied down a little bit. People were trying to get through, unable to, but now they're able to get in there and you'll be able to have your cards and letters answered here by Mr. Rogers. And give me one second here, and we will get this Apple chart up and discuss it a little bit. Uh, Apple's in a case where if it closes low today, you could get another big uh, island reversal, but there's no island. Let me just, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring it to your attention. Someone asked me about that island reversal. Uh, what happened was, you'll notice the island reversal occurred on uh, Monday. This is Wednesday. And you'll notice that what it did was it went back and touched the bottom end of the island, so there's no island there anymore. So this is not an island reversal pattern in the Apple. That's very important. That doesn't mean, you know, that it's, uh, you know, that it's going to be, uh, you know, working or not, but we'll have to wait and see. You know, that that's the main thing of, uh, you know, what's going on. So I, that's, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see if that's going to be the case. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. It's not not to worry. Okay, let's move on to uh, uh, one other one that someone asked me about, which was the uh, the Dow Jones Transportation Index. And I wanted to show you this because this was another one that was screaming that the stock market was really making a high this past week. You'll notice that we had a perfect head and shoulders pattern. And when you have a head and shoulders pattern, this is uh, brought to your attention in, in uh, John Murphy's book, you know, technical analysis, you know, basically the Bible after Edwards and McGee. Uh, well, I think the Bible is Gartley, but that book was $1,500. Anyway, the head and shoulders pattern, you need the head and the shoulders to be equal in time, and the head to the shoulder, left shoulder to the right shoulder, be equal in time. And the right shoulder should be lower than the left shoulder, as you can see here in the transportation index. It certainly was. And now you notice that that thing has started to uh, so sell off with the rest of the market, given the fact that everybody's talking about, uh, you know, what's going on in China. So that's uh, that's neither neither here nor there. <laughs> Someone asked me some of my experiences in China. Gosh, I tell you, I had so many of them. I oh dear, I took that trip down the Yi River. Boy, if you ever want to go to someplace spectacular, it's uh, their equivalent of the Grand Canyon. But man, is it spectacular! Man, that that is. Uh, that is one trip into thousands of years of uh, civilization. There, wow! All right, let's move on to uh, let's move on to one other one that we have to talk about, and that is the British pound. Uh, the British pound is coming down now to that 130 level. It's backed off. I think we got up to that 138. We made that 61 percent retracement on the upside, which uh, which was the profit objective. Hold on, British pound, where are you? There we go. We're sure we're coming. Here we go. You know, we got up to that 130.173. We now dropped 160 pips off of that. We should be coming in to some pretty good support here at that 130 level. That would be the uh, retracement level that we need to be watching here if we're going to re-enter the British pound. We haven't got a clear signal on that yet. The one that looks the most interesting, of course, is this Japanese yen because of what it's done. It's got a very interesting pattern here. And I think it's, uh, well, we got pretty close to that 2890 in the S&P. Let's keep hoping we get up there. Let's move up here to the Japanese yen here for a second. Wow, the break is coming. Are you kidding me? Where does the time go? Shut the front door and raise the rent. 
Let's put up the Japanese yen here. Oh, we're almost there in the Japanese yen. We broke below the 900 level, just a little bit, 109 level, but we're getting close in that Japanese yen. You got to watch it, 109.67, folks. Very interesting. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, this next chart comes from our good friend uh, Rich Anderson and Cy Monley. If you'll look at the double top that we've had there from 2018 and 2019, you can see the three drive that formed there at the high just a week or so ago. But what's important here, the red lines are the gaps from the past. And the blue lines are the gaps in the future. In other words, the first gap to be filled is at 2836. This is the cash S&P. The next gap under that is another 50 handles lower at 2784. There's a, still a gap there. There's another gap at 2744. And then the final gap is at 2718, which is interesting because at 2718, I mean, that's a long way down, 100 and what, 200 points where we are now, 180. Uh, you're looking at a, a 382 retracement. That just shows you how bullish 
that doggone thing was, uh, you know, way back in December. So those are just things. Gaps are filled. You don't see very many unfulfilled gaps, but um, it might take a while for them to be filled, but uh, that's what we're looking at. The first gap, of course, is at 2836. The second gap, the important second one, is 2784. Now, um, we believe me, we're still way overbought on a weekly chart, not so much on the daily, but uh, keep an eye on these numbers because these gaps will be filled. And the first one, of course, is at 2836. The second one, 2784. The third one, 2744. And the last one, 2718. So if we pay attention to those, that'll give us a pretty good idea that we're, uh, you know, we're able to see some of these. So that's what I think would be uh, rather important uh, to take a look at these. So that's mainly what we're looking at today. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude. May God bless and try to do something nice for somebody else, folks. That's what we're here for. It's not what we get. It's what we give. That's what life is all about. The words from our good friend, Winston Churchill. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, my friends. 